What up, what up, what up? It's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about titration of amino acids, the peptide bonds, the protein structure, i.e. primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary protein structure. Then we talked about conjugated proteins and protein denaturation. Today, it's time to turn our attention to protein denaturation. If you remember the tertiary structure, which was the three-dimensional shape of the protein, denaturation is the exact opposite. It's destroying the three-dimensional structure. Protein denaturation is to take a perfectly functional protein and, if you may forgive my language, to break it down into pieces of trash, to unfold it. This is my biochemistry playlist. Please watch these videos in order. Here's the amino acid. What do we say? Amino acid. Amino group on the left, carboxyl group on the right. What's the name of this wonderful carbon? Alpha carbon. This is the N terminus. This is the C terminus. This is a functional group, side chain, and there is hydrogen here. Lump two amino acids together, congratulations, it's a dipeptide. Get me more, tripeptides, which is made of three amino acids. Then oligo, then polypeptides, and then keep lumping them together until you end up with big proteins. Are all of these amino acids incorporated into proteins? No, only 20 amino acids are. These are known as proteogenic amino acids. These are the ones coded by your DNA. These are the ones incorporated into your proteins. Each one has a name, has a three-letter abbreviation and a one-letter abbreviation. And again, because I'm a piece of melana, I misspelled the word abbreviation. I forgot to be here. Here is protein structure, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary protein structure. And here's the comparison table among them. Please recall that the tertiary structure is the three-dimensional shape of the protein. Who's responsible for that? Three forces, hydrogen bonds, disulfide bonds, and salt bridges. Because basically, the protein starts as just a sequence of amino acid called primary structure. And then as you go from the sample to the complex, you keep folding it and folding it and folding it. For instance, collagen and elastin are fibrous proteins, but globin, myoglobin, and globulin are globular proteins. Ever wondered why? Because of the tertiary structure, three-dimensional shape, folding and folding and folding. And if you remember, I told you before that the opposite of this three-dimensional shape, i.e. the opposite of folding is called unfolding denaturation of protein. So protein denaturation, it's the unfolding, it's the loss of the three-dimensional structure of protein. Do you think when I take this lovely three-dimensional protein and uh, degrade it into pieces of trash, do you think the trash can function? No, of course not. It's non-functioning. It cannot catalyze reactions. Most denaturations are irreversible. You cannot go back, baby. How do I denature my protein? You can do it via heat or via solutes like urea and others. Give me examples of protein denaturation. The best example that I can give you is death after prolonged high fever. Here's the deal. If you go to your doctor and say, hi doctor, you know what? My normal body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. If your temperature went up from 37 to 37 and a half, your doctor is probably gonna send you home. Shut up and go home you're fine. However, I want you to go to your doctor with a body temperature of 42 degrees Celsius. Your doctor will start to cry and weep, sprinkle some dust particle on his head, and thinketh that the end of earth has cometh. Why, medicosis? Well, even though your doctor cannot draw an elaborate protein structure if his life depended on it, your doctor knows what's up. He knows that once your temperature goes up that much, this can lead to irreversible denaturation, i.e. unfolding of the proteins in your body. And don't forget, almost all of the enzymes in your body are proteins. All the pumps are proteins. All the receptors are proteins. All the channels are proteins. All the carriers are protein, i.e. your body functions will cease and you will be toast, known as dead. This is why protein denaturation is dangerous. And this is a good time to give antipyretic medications. What does pyrex mean? 
Do you, have you heard of Pyrex glass? The one that you can put in the oven without breaking it? Pyro means heat. Antipyretic are anti-favor medications. Anti-heat. So that's how protein denaturation can be deadly. Do you have another example? Sure. Raw eggs have folded albumin, which is transparent. If you heat them, i.e. boil them and cook them, the albumin will be unfolded, hashtag denatured, and will become opaque, and this is irreversible. You cannot go back to the transparent albumin, no matter how many YouTube hacks you watch. It's irreversible, baby. You cannot go back. How about another example? Remember cestin? Yeah, if I break cestin down using urea, which is a solute, I will break the disulfide bond between a sulfur from cysteine and another sulfur, and you'll break the cysteine into cysteine and cysteine. This is denaturation as well. And don't forget the disulfide bond kept the protein structure together. When you break it down, you cause denaturation and unfolding. Do you have other examples of solutes? Yeah, there is something called SDS, which stands for sodium lauryl sulfate, aka sodium dodecyl sulfate. This will disrupt all kinds of bonds inside the protein structure, and then you break down the tertiary structure. If you go far enough, you can even break the secondary structure. And if you like this video, you will enjoy my acid base imbalance course on my website, metacosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.